Hey guys, it's me Ali Sundarji. I'm here today in Arusha on my way to the Serengeti for safari. Here with my family and it is absolutely gorgeous. The roads are lined with acacia trees, which is really interesting to me because my grandfather's store's name was Acacia House in Dar es Salaam, which we saw yesterday, the location where it was. And uh, I'll catch up with you later on and show you the fun and exciting animals we see. And it's I, my first time in Africa, in uh, East Africa where my parents are from. And we're hearing a lot of Kiswahili and you know we're hearing a lot of kidogo, kidogo, sana, sana, we, 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 we. And uh, I, I don't know much Swahili except for the Pajan that I compose in Swahili, Nihurumi and Isaibie. And uh, we'll catch up with you later and show you the fun animals. Crater. You look behind you and you can see this gorgeous view of all of the greenery and the salt lake and the freshwater lake as well. And there's tons of locals around here. So on safari we are watching all of these animals migrate from Kenya to Tanzania. Of course, they don't know what a border is and what nationalities are and countries are, but they're all friends with each other. We see wildebeest, we see um, lots of zebras. What else is there? Impalas. Impalas. There are impalas. Anything else? They're back there. The impalas are way down there. The zebras, the wildebeest. They're all friends with each other. They're all migrating from the other part of the safaris like in Kenya, Masai Mara and all of that. We just spotted this family of three or four lions, which are quite young, and if you look at the distance, you can see a zebra. It looks like it's a very fresh kill. They just hunted this zebra, and they're enjoying one of their first meals. You can actually see the zebra has uh, open wounds, and, uh, and you can actually see one of the lions has blood on its mouth. So, uh, sad for me to see because I'm a vegetarian, but... Uh, it's, uh, it's the circle of life, I guess, as they say in the Lion King. They're happy to enjoy maybe their first or second meal. Yeah, the other one is closer.
guys, here are some giraffes. We're in the Serengeti and we see a whole cluster of giraffes, I think about five or six of them. And uh, it's interesting, the pattern on their skin is this pattern that we associate with giraffes. What we call the giraffe pattern. This is where it came from. Hi everyone, this is um, some baboons just like Ali Sunderji! <laughs> uh, so it's like they're taking a nap, crossing the road. We, we call them stupid, but they're very smart too. Yeah, because if they see one running, they'll all run, they all go. Anna. All the zebras, or as my friend Lily Singh calls it, Superwoman. Look at all the zebras. You can see all of the beautiful zebras, and you can also see a hive up there. And there are all of these classic trees which we associate with the uh, Lion King uh, print work and marketing. Uh, these are actually flat acacia trees, and they're really majestic. They look almost comical because we've seen it so much in the Lion King. You can see all of these zebras in their natural habitat. And I actually found out that just like the human fingerprint, every zebra's stripe is, is unique. So no zebra has the same stripes as any other. And they're all made unique and that's the creation of God. So we're now descending 610 meters down to the Ngorongoro crater and this is really interesting. You can see the crater behind me. This crater was formed uh, 2.5 million years ago and uh, any guesses who created it? His name is G-O-B. God. So uh, Allah's creation. There we go, hashtag Allah's creation. So, um, going downhill, and actually in front of us, that's where we were uh, descending down, there were a few vehicles of this Japanese camera crew that were uh, filming this for their TV stations. So they had signs all over saying, do not follow us, do not follow us, do not follow us. So we're not following them as per their wishes. And uh, I'll show you once more we're down underneath. So as you saw, we're at the base of the Ngorongoro crater. And you can see in these plains over here, all of the herbivores, how they coexist and live together in harmony. You see wildebeest, you see um, one of those, those are gazelles. You see way in the distance, there is rhinos. We also saw, uh, we also saw a lot of, um, media people filming they're not herbivores I guess but we saw a lot of ostriches as well we even saw hippos we saw uh, antelope what else did we see yeah we saw two rhinos way in the distance over there um, yeah oh we saw lions right at the side of the road and uh, I'll show you a video of that shortly the lions were just laying, the one, the, the, the mom was just laying on her back asleep with her legs open in the air. And there were all of these flies on her belly, but she didn't really care. 
and there's a tribe of Mzungus coming by. <laughs> but film the Mzungu. Hi, Mzungu! <laughs> they don't know what Mzungu means, but they will when they watch this video. You see all of these hippos over here, they're really relaxed. Now, the first thing that, that you uh, encounter when you come by them is the overbearing smell. They stink. And um, they're really like chakra, but that, that's their environment, that's what they like. Um, we just saw one open its jaws and its entire mouth was pink. They have huge teeth and their jaws are huge. And they, uh, they mainly stay here in the river. I think they're, uh, uh, most of them are standing right now. They also swim very well and they can hold their breath and swim underwater for, for five to six minutes. And um, they, you know the song, Hungry Hungry Hippo? Hungry Hungry Hippo, Hungry Hungry Hippo. So they don't exactly eat humans because uh, they're herbivores. So uh, if a human does come in its way or and they're frightened, they feel like they're trying to attack them then they will harm them, they'll give them multiple wounds, but they won't eat them because they're herbivores. <laughs> Any other questions? Sawa? Sawa. And that's why hippo kills lots of human beings, but it's not part of the big fest, because it's if I go hunting uh, the hippo, After a wonderful safari, going to three locations, three different Serena hotels, we're now boarding the flight to Zanzibar. So I'll catch up with you when we're there. We're in the Arusha International Airport, the Manjaro International Airport, um, and this air taxi on flight, which is surprisingly big compared to what we had coming to Arusha. So I'll catch up with you when I'm in Zanzibar. Thanks, bye. So I've just boarded the flight to Zanzibar, and they're playing Malaika. Hey guys, we are here today to wish you a very, very warm Fajeri. We've left Africa. We're now at the Amsterdam airport. And just to give you some final thoughts on Africa. So Tanzania was wonderful. One of the most memorable trips I've taken by far. And it even more special that I had my official camera woman slash sister with me to celebrate with. And um, as well having my parents and all of the Swahili language and influences and everything. It was just so interesting. We heard Swahili R&B music. We heard Swahili rap music playing on the radio stations of the universe. So here are my final thoughts for just traveling in general to the um, developing countries. So traveling throughout Tanzania, the first thing I like to mention is that our travel doctors highly recommended that we must take malaria pills. So what we found is that one of our one of the people traveling with us got direly sick and we had to call the hospital to the safari lodge and it was a really big thing. They were they had they were shivering, they had uh, loose motions, they had vomiting, they had all sorts of unpleasant things and this was all caused by the malaria pills. So what well, my advice would be is don't take malaria pills unless you actually get malaria and um, in the developing countries it's, it's only like a three dose thing and it costs only a couple of Canadian dollars. So don't get that free thing done 
It's extremely expensive to buy from the industrialized world, from Canada, USA, UK, Europe, whatever. It's very expensive to buy from there. It's you're much better off just not not buying the malaria pills. And if you ever if you get infected with malaria, then you can always get the the remedy for that. Other interesting thing to mention about Tanzania now, it's still it's a developing country. So in terms of the Uber, they don't rely on technology as much as we do. So in the industrialized world, when we call it Uber. As the destination, our pickup point, so they come and pick us up over there. Whereas in Tanzania, you have to actually, once they, it'll say they're one minute away, it'll be 20 minutes later and they'll still be nowhere to be found. You have to actually phone them and say, hello, is this my Uba? And Uba driver, and you have to say to them uh, that this is where I am. Haraka haraka sana, meaning come quickly. And otherwise they just will not show up. And then also you have to guide them where to go once you're in the car. They won't look at their map to see where the drop-off uh, is. They'll actually just tell, rely on... We actually had an Uber driver just a few days ago. Drove us in the completely wrong direction for over one hour. And then they kept on asking me, Where's, where are you going? And I didn't remember the name of the place, so I told them to the, de the drop-off destination, look, open the phone and look at the map. And, and after we were like an hour away from there, past that, that's when we turned around and finally, like, it was a big thing. It's just because they don't rely on technology as much as we do. So everything's still very fluid. If they say they'll be there in one minute, that can mean anything. So don't rely on that. The other thing is traffic in Dar es Salaam. It is crazy. Yesterday, I left Karyaku at... Uh, I met my friend Divyesh in uh, at Karyaku and I left there at um, 4.38 and I did not reach Kunduchi by what time was it? 7.15 7.15 And it's an hour drive? It's not an hour drive Without so, traffic, how far is it? it it's, it's, a, it's a 22 minute drive okay. regularly but it took over 3 hours That is absolutely ridiculous and it's because there's no infrastructure, roads are not there, and all of that stuff. Some other things I'd like to warn you about, or not warn you, but advise you about when you go to Tanzania, you can get some lovely souvenirs and things for your home. So I got a Makonde family tree, and I got uh, Zanzibar, Jambarja, Darbaja. Only thing I want to advise everyone about is buy all of these things, but make sure you get the certificates that say what it is so that you don't have any problems at customs at the airport. If it's Makonde, you have to make sure it's from an authorized dealer so that the wood is uh, not containing any of the uh, news in it. What's the term for this? Any of it, it's cured wood basically, that there's no. Uh, there's no infestations within the wood that will pose a threat to the country where you're going to. So those are some things to keep in mind. I'm very sad to be out of Dar es Salaam, especially Zanzibar, because that's where I felt the most connection to. But being over there, having the beautifully folded, perfectly triangular samosas and the uh, nylon bhajia and the bate javaras and the darna bhajia, Italian bateta and madafu and the uh, matunda and what else did we have? Embe, anenasi, we had uh, tiki tiki madi, we had all of these fruits, jambura, that were just delicious that we don't get in Canada. Even though we get some of these fruits in Canada, they're not as fragrant as they were over here. The only thing we did not find was gulabi, but that still, it was just a phenomenal trip. And you should all do safari if you have the means to. Do it once in your life. We did it for three nights, four days. That's overkill in my opinion. One night, two days is more than sufficient. If you want to do more, then you can do two nights and three days. But that three nights, four days was too much because by the second day, it's like, oh, look, there's a lion right by our by our tire. Okay, yeah, we saw lions yesterday. Okay, it's done now. It's yesterday's topic. It just, it's like you just, saturation is what it's called. Drink lots of madafus every day in Africa because they have cellulite in them. Is that electrolytes. <laughs> they have electrolytes in them. I always say they have cellulite, but they have electrolytes in them. And naryal parni or madafu young coconuts are really beneficial for you to keep you hydrated because it keeps you hydrated 
for a much longer time than regular water would. Other thing, always check your water bottles. Uh, shukar mola, alhamdulillah, we didn't, I didn't get sick at all while I was there. And uh, just because, you know, being careful about what you're eating and making sure whatever you eat from the street is sizzling hot when you get it. Nothing is sitting out. The only thing we got that was sitting out uh, was probably one time the mandazi, but it was still warm when we got it, so it was like recently fried. But it was just wonderful. So I bid all of you, Kwaheri uh, and Satisana, thank you for joining me on my trip to Tanzania, the land of my ancestors. And I wish you join me on many, many more of my journeys. Safar Salamat and Kwaheri. Also, forgot to mention this really if you really want you can hit that subscribe button down there and um, yeah hit the subscribe button hit the bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video you'll get notified by email give me thumbs up because that always encourages me more and hit the subscribe button right there when you hit subscribe it's just it makes my day because it means I have more and more subscribers and once I reach a hundred thousand subscribers I'll get a play button from YouTube, which is my game right now. Thank you, Kwaheri.